Hi everyone, it's Lib Thims, your human chemistry professor, and today we're going to give a lecture on the theory of the human molecule. To give an idea of what is meant by the term human molecule, to a good approximation, any random inquisitive 10-year-old child curious about themselves can go down to their local library, find various mass composition tables of a human, and using any standard chemistry textbook, calculate what is called the empirical formula, which is the whole number of ratio of atoms in a structure, and thereafter find the average molecular formula for a human being. Once confirmation has been obtained that a person is indeed a molecule, either through visually seeing one's formula or through making the calculation, a slew of philosophical questions come to the fore. Many of these are rather tricky. Does, for instance, a human molecule have a free will? Does a human molecule have a soul? Can a molecule technically be defined as being alive? Do molecules struggle to exist, as Darwin posited in 1859? All of these questions, however, can be resolved at a given time using the molecular point of view or through a molecular philosophy. Whatever answer one chooses for their philosophical question, it must be the same for both the hydrogen atom and the human being, assuming a continuity in the synthesis from the hydrogen atom up through the evolutionary timeline and mechanism through the formation of the human molecule. In this direction, let's present the facts. Fact one, you are located in one of the spiral arms, specifically the Orion arm, of a rotating system of star systems called the Milky Way galaxy, at the center of which is located a black hole. A rotating galaxy, which itself is part of what is called a local group, a system of about 50 galaxies, a group which itself is part of a supercluster of about 100 groups called the Virgo supercluster. A supercluster which itself is located on what is called a supercluster map containing about 50 superclusters. A map which itself is positioned in the middle of what are called the galactic filaments, the largest structures in the known universe. Fact number two, in the Orion arm of the Milky Way, you are located on the third radio planet called the Earth, attached to its surface, which is called substrate, in a region delineated by what is called a thermodynamic system. which is located in the framework of a larger star system called the solar system, at the center of which is found a medium-sized star called the sun, a star which is currently halfway through its life cycle. Fact number three, in the framework of the solar system, you as a person are technically defined according to mass composition as a 26 element reactive molecule. which is gravitationally attached to the surface of the Earth, which itself is a planet defined as a large 92-element geochemical molecule, which rotates on its axis once every 24 hours, traveling in trajectory in elliptical orbit about the central star of the solar system once every 365 years. Fact number four. The first to conceive of a theory that each person is a molecule or a chemically reactive structure of atoms was German scientist Johann Goethe in 1809. Unless I'm mistaken, said Edward with a smile, your remarks carry a double meaning. Confess it now. When all is said, I am in your eyes the lion which the captain, as sulfuric acid, has seized on, withdrawn from your charming company, and transformed a stubborn gypsum. The first to specifically define a person as a human molecule, coining this term, was French philosopher Hippolyte Taine in 1869. The psychologist first notes and follows the general transformations presented by a certain human molecule or a certain peculiar group of human molecules, and to explain these transformations, he writes the psychology of the molecule or its group. The first to state specifically that a person's body is a chemical formula in operation 
was American physician George Carey in 1919. Man's body is a chemical formula in operation, and there can be but one law of chemical operation in vegetable or animal organisms. The first calculations of the empirical molecular formula for an average human molecule were made independently within the last decade by American limnologists Robert Sterner and James Elser in April of 2000. From information on the quantities of individual elements, we can calculate the stoichiometric formula for a living human being to be defined by the following empirical molecular formula, showing 22 elements listed in whole number ratios consisting of hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, sulfur, sodium, potassium, chloride, magnesium, silicon, iron, zinc, copper, iodine, manganese, fluoride, chromium, selenium, molybdenum, and cobalt. This formula combines all compounds in a human being into a single abstract molecule. This formula sets the value of the scarcest substance, cobalt, mass in humans approximately one milligram, equal to a stoichiometric coefficient of one and shows relative amounts, not absolute ones. Our main purpose in introducing this formula for the human molecule is to stimulate you to begin to think about how every human being represents the coming together of atoms in proportions that are, if not constant, at least bound to obey some rules. And by myself, an American chemical engineer by trade, in September of 2002. During the writing of four manuscripts in one textbook between 2002 and 2007, the calculation for the molecular formula for the human molecule is made by myself. This calculation shows that for an average 70 kilogram person, one is technically defined as a 26 element molecule. This chemical expression was compiled using over a dozen mass composition data tables and dietary almanacs. In particular, Emsley's 2001 Nature's Building Blocks and A to Z Guide to the Elements. Sterner and Elser were led into their human molecular calculation through what's called the stoichiometric approach, which, as they state, represents organisms as single abstract molecules. They apply this logic to the study of freshwater microorganisms. In doing so, they found or discovered that many closely related species differ in their internal carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus ratios, depending on location. Myself, I was led into the calculation of the human molecular formula through several years of study of human chemical reactions between 1995 and 2002, viewed through the science of chemical thermodynamics which can be used to predict the energetic feasibility of any given chemical reaction, such as in Love the Chemical Reaction. Fact number five. When confronted with the question of whether or not one is a molecule, polls show that about, on average, 57% of people agree that they are a large or giant molecule. In some of these five facts, the human being is a reactive molecule attached to a surface called substrate on a larger molecule called the earth found in a spiral arm of a larger rotative reactive chemical system called the Milky Way, a galaxy which is defined by its movement and place in the galactic filament structure of the universe. This view to note is a revolutionary view of human existence paramount to the 1330 BC Aristotelian evidence against the flat earth theory and the 1543 Copernican displacement of the geocentric model. The theory of the human molecule, to note, is now without controversy. Yet, in quoting through the 1637 words of French philosopher René Descartes in protest against those who in some way believe that human actions differ in some way than those actions of lower animals, whatever reasons one might have for denying these facts, they can be hardly expressed publicly without leaving oneself open to the ridicule of children and feeble minds.